Hey, Spuddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Dune Spice Wars. I have been having a ton of fun checking this game out, and today I want to check out House Harkonnen. They have the oppression ability, they also get more village resource production for every act of militia, and they always know the influence flows of other factions, as well as a general 10% village production malice. They also get... Um, at 5k hegemony, 10% unit power and 100% agent recruitment speed while at least one ally village is under oppression. These guys seem very micro heavy and interesting to play. And at 10k hegemony, we can assign an agent to a mission to reduce its cost and preparation time, but the agent will be sacrificed. So very, very brutal and oppressive and militaristic faction here. Uh, we do get to pick two counselors. We could take Fade Ray. Rautha Harkonnen, which allows us to use corruption on Landsvad resolutions, causing a loss of Landsvad uh, standing for the elected faction and gaining 10 influence upon killing a rebel. Or we could take uh, Peter de Vries, which gives us access to the stealth probe unit with the infiltration drone trait. This is more of an intel based play, I think. And then we could also get the ornithopters with the uh, infiltration trait too, which would be kind of neat. Uh, we also have Raban Harkonnen with plus one militia slot. I like the idea of plus one militia slot. If I fill those militia slots, that's like a 5% village resource production. So I think I'll take Raban. He seems quite easy to use. And then we have Ayakin Nefud, who has 50% refund for when my military units die and a combat drugs mission reduction i'm kind of tempted by fade routha harkonnen and raban harkonnen um let's see which one do i want to do yeah let's do fade routha like oh well no let's 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 go with the simple build iacon the food we'll kind of we'll play like the the two easy counselors it's i i actually i sh had meant to upgrade the difficulty but that's okay we're we're still learning the game you know what i'm not okay with that hold on let me just go up the difficulty here so we can experience the game on a slightly harder uh standing here so tutorial is disabled map size oh you could do large maps Ooh. so we have hard and insane let's start playing on hard okay hard's like a little bit a little bit more difficult might be a little bit more challenging i'm not sure i'm ready for insane but i think i think i can take hard all right, so here is our starting zone and the spice is to the north. Let's go ahead and recruit a trooper and a gunner. We'll kind of have a look at those troops here in a second. The spice village is over here to the east. You always want to grab your spice zone first, I feel, because the spice is the most important resource. So getting that online and going early seems like it would be quite important. Um, yeah, but I've been having a lot of fun playing this uh, playing this game. It, it definitely gives me vibes of Northgard. Uh, which was one of their previous games, but it has its own flair. Like it's a, it's, it's a definitely it's its own unique game, but it definitely has that sort of Shiro games vibe. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my way over to attack this village. But if I go ahead and check these units, the Harkonnen melee unit is the Berserker or a trooper, right? But as it loses, as it takes damage, right, it gains uh, power. So it attacks, does more damage as it loses health. So it's kind of like the, the Berserker trope. And then their ranged unit is the Gunner, which has collateral damage, which allows their attacks to be AOE. They deal damage to nearby allies. Um, and they also, um, I'm trying to remember now, they they have some other ability too? No, they're just, they're just technically a demolition team. So it'll take us a little bit of time to take these guys on. The wind is pretty bad in here, but we're also exploring. I'm looking forward to getting a hold of these minerals. That'll be good plascrete production. And it looks like we're in the southeast of the map. I think two military units for now is like a totally reasonable amount. Looks like we've got a worm coming. Let's go ahead and get off the sand. We do not want to get eaten by that worm. And we got our first little chunk of XP. So these guys need to get 100 XP in order to uh, become level two. And ideally I would be keeping my units alive if possible. I think that would be pretty important. Uh, it, you know, you don't want to be losing units willy nilly for no reason. Um, but this first village is just about done though. And we can now take control and begin harvesting the spice. I think I would like to recruit one more unit. Um, a second trooper, I think, would actually suit me a little bit better here because they do a little bit more damage. The AOE isn't so important. So I'll get a second trooper so that I can fight and pillage and take over these other villages just a little bit easier. Uh, and let's kind of like increase the game speed a little bit. First technology time. And I, I did spend a couple of minutes studying the Harkonnen tech tree. And they have like some pretty interesting unique techs, right? And I think playing around your faction's unique techs is kind of important. Like if we look at central command here, uh, this every time a un unit, military unit dies, ally military units that are fighting receive a po power bonus. So that's kind of like a interesting bonus that we might want to eventually take. Um, it lets us fight militia slightly better so we can expand better. Uh, we also have martial economy. 
This gives you a 30% Solari upkeep on your military units and also cheaper to make them. And you can assign more agents to Chome Infiltration. Then we also have Instill Fear, which makes it cheaper to annex villages you've pillaged. So that is kind of interesting because it prevents... Normally when you pillage a village, it actually makes it harder to annex it. Because the village like hates you and remembers you. But as Harkonnen... We can instill fear. So uh, kind of my instinct is to kind of go straight for instill fear. And then we also have cruel reputation, which uh, if we use an operation in a region, it gives it a minus 10% authority cost to annex that village for two days. So I, I think in combination with like instill fear and cruel reputation, we could do some very interesting expansion stuff. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with local dialect studies for that 15% authority cost reduction. And then I'll go for local hubs for the knowledge and then I will make my way to instill fear. And I think this will set me up for a very, very expansion-based game where I can be very aggressive, I can capture villages, I can do a lot of stuff. Let's go ahead and get our refinery. And also, in addition to our refinery, we're going to build our militia, because remember, as the Harkonnens, we need lots of militia in our towns to actually get a production boost, because we have a natural production malice in every town. So there's kind of a little bit of a, um, a little bit of work we have to do there. So we have our three troops now, and I think three troops is enough for the early game. You can eventually go up to six, and I think three will do me for the foreseeable future. I only really need the gunner to break the enemy's armor. And by breaking the enemy's armor, they should theoretically take more damage. Sandworm detected, let's go ahead and get on the safe stone before we start killing this guy. Perfect, we've taken this over. We could pillage, but I'm going to go ahead and take control. In addition as well, uh, I think over here, it kind of depends on how my exploration goes, actually, what my next buildings are. So let's kind of see what we can do. It depends. If there's a town here, I might build a maintenance center. But we kind of have to kind of like look around and see what's available. We can get a really good fuel source down here. That'll be nice. Um, but uh, Harkonnen, I think Harkonnen needs to rely heavily on military expansion and raiding and doing all that sort of stuff. I don't think they can rely so much on sort of the careful, methodical, peaceful gameplay that like Atreides can. Harkonnen needs to be brutal. You need to be offensive. It's kind of like their entire build um, is like built that way. So in Agmara, I think I'm going to go ahead and get myself a Plascrete factory because there is minerals here giving it a 50% production bonus. And I'm also going to get myself a maintenance facility which will lower the upkeep on all four of these adjacent zones, which is exactly what I'm looking for here. Go. Um, so I gotta find I gotta find my next raiding target, and I'm probably gonna raid Arakaya here for the money. Because yes, I do need cash. And I do like money. And it will let me fill up my salary banks. Okay, we've got actually a town here. Okay, so it looks like we've got an awful lot of desert around us, which is kind of good because we can see the lanes. I do like the way the map is designed with these kind of like quote unquote lanes, um, sort of dictated by the desert. All right, perfect. This town is taken. The sandworm is here. I feel like the Harkonnens have like a way better chance of <laughs> attracting the sandworm. But our goal in this town is to pillage. We want that money. Pick up that extra bit of cash in the early game. Um, we also need to deploy our harvester and put them on auto recall. Need to get that stuff stockpiled. I got a bit distracted and forgot. Uh, so the pillage went off. We can make our way back to our homestead here. And I'll get my ornithopter to start scouting more villages. We also have our very first... Uh, agent, I'm going to go to the Spacing Guild because the Spacing Guild will give me manpower production. And manpower production is important for the Harkonnens because if you want to use the Oppression ability, it actually takes some manpower. So I could actually maximize my spice production here by clicking this button. And I will. Uh, because I am, I'm trying to embody the Harkonnen. I will use brutal repression. I will use everything I need to do in order to make it so that I uh, I get what I want. I'm going to build some militia here and I'm going to drop down a maintenance center as well. So any of the buildings I build in these four zones here will be lower in terms of maintenance, right? They'll be cheaper for me to keep keep going. Um, and we have another town that we can raid here once we're ready. And I, I feel like it's important as Harkonnen to be raiding actively, right? You, you want to be out on the map. You want to be leveling up your troops. You want to be gaining power. Uh, you want to be doing all those things. Now, I do want to save up manpower and i think i do want to actually build a recruitment office in here manpower is like super important this harkonnen like you just you it feels like i need so much of it not only for my spice harvesters but also just like in general to be able to do oppression need to have a big military there's just an awfully big demand for uh for all those things but yeah ac active raiding i think is this is the like super key thing here 
for Harkonnen. Oh, we do have a little bit of a sandworm intervention. Let's get onto this. I like how there are, like, even though this is, like, Dune, and it's, you know, it's a desert planet, there are, like, differences in the, um, in the biome. So we're going to pillage this town. Now, unfortunately, these pillages are actually making them more expensive to take, but I think that's a very, very small price to pay in exchange for experience and um, a little bit of early game money. So I'm willing to kind of take the malice of that for now uh, in exchange for the long-term benefit. So there's our recruitment center is up. We're making tons of manpower, so we can now start using oppression more actively. I'd like my Plascrete supplies to go up, and I need to think about my next annexation. Um, it could be this city down here, and I also need to think about my next, uh, my next water supply. So I'm going to build some water supply in here because this is a f five wind strength zone and you get three water per level of wind and um, we'll go ahead and get these troops healed up and then get ready to take arakea which will give me access to more fuel cells looks like we have our first rebellion which is another opportunity to level our troops up i'm okay with this remember rebellion is rebellion and chaos and bloodshed that is the harkonnen way right brutality power so like this rebellion is not a problem for me uh, I'm going to deploy an agent onto Arrakis because I want that extra authority production that'll allow me to start to control more towns and it'll also allow me to start doing more intel based missions here like gear sabotage, supply drops and I will want to be doing supply drops and poisoning the reserves and all this sort of stuff later on in the game. So the good news is we are going to get plenty of experience here to level up our guys and I don't think I'm ready. Uh, the, the downside is of course a rebellion naturally interrupts your economy for a while. Um, but I think I would like to get another gunner, so I can go up to a four-man army. But otherwise, I'm feeling pretty good about my current standing. The sound design in this game, by the way, is absolutely on point. The music is fantastic, so we've taken back Ulcus, and we can begin uh, making our way back down to Carthag, so we can grab Arakaya. I need to think about where my next spice field is. I think that would be, like, key. And I haven't really found another one. I, I suspect there might be a spice field out here somewhere or something. Oh, there's a crashed ornithopter. Let's go ahead and grab that crashed ornithopter, actually. That'll allow us to auto-explore and find more of the map and be able to identify things that are important to us. And um, we'll go ahead and deploy that spice harvester back out. There is a new Landsrad council coming. Manpower upkeep I can live with. I would like to get Imperial Propaganda. That would help me expand in the early game. Uh, let's go ahead and take our, our Krya now. And we have the ornithopter. And we'll just go ahead and set that ornithopter on auto auto uh auto explore should be a fairly straightforward capture here and we'll have a huge fuel cell bonus going now in terms of my next buildings ulcus does have enough water to like enough wind to justify a water thing so i might do that i don't want to pillage i want to capture this village i'm also going to want to play like a little bit more aggressively in terms of airports than i did in my previous game uh, when I played as the Atreides, because mobility is going to be key. I'm going to be having to micro quite a lot in order to maximize my income and stuff like that. I'm going to use Brutal Oppression again, because look at the amount of spice production I'm getting. 62 spice. I can, like, sell so much. Uh, the price of a little rebellion is, like, quite small. So tech-wise, we now have Instill Fear. So raiding towns will reduce their authority cost. And now I think I want to make my way down to Cruel Reputation, which will require Intelligence Network, diplomatic maneuvers and then cruel reputation intelligence network is nice it does unlock the data center building and give us a little bit more infiltration uh bonuses in terms of salarian influence uh, so we can make our way down here this will uh the, the important thing for this though is whenever i make a play ooh, i really want army logistics too 30 percent more resources when pillaging i think though i want to go for like heavy expansionist so i think cruel reputation is kind of the direction to go now. Now that I have, like, pillages makes villages cheaper to grab. I think that's a good move. I wonder what's over here in the salt plains. This is, like, a very interesting place. All right, we have a spice field here. So we've identified our second spice town. Let's go ahead and get into position. I have the authority to annex it, so I don't need to pillage it. We can just go straight in there. Uh, and we're going to deploy another crew to this harvester. And we also need to be thinking about the uh, brutal oppression here. This will give this place a chance to rebel. Uh, in Arakaya, we're going to grab a militia and a militia and then a ranged militia and we'll get a demolition militia once we have the manpower. And we'll have the manpower very shortly. There you go. So again, like I was saying, manpower is super... Wait, what's this? A raid. Okay, I think... I think these two guys can handle this. I think, actually, this is only two raiders and I have a full set of militia there. I think I should be fine. I should not be having problems there. I would... I think I want to get as much development to this game as possible. 
because I'm not going to be building much research um, because I'm going to be playing very, very militaristically. Ooh, get off of the unsafe ground, please, so you don't get eaten by the sandwormy. Uh, and then we can go ahead and take control of this as well. And we can get our second spice. Oh, wait. Well, that was a mistake. This isn't the spice harvesting area. Well, that's not a big deal. We'll, we'll make use of this regardless. But this city did manage to hold its own. That Those raids will get bigger and more dangerous as time goes on. It is time to vote in the Landsraad. I would like to get Imperial Propaganda. I don't have an influence income, sadly, because of my low Landsraad standing. So I would like Manpower Upkeep to not be a thing. And I would be okay with Scientific Congress going through. But otherwise, I would like to get the authority. But I can't really afford to spend my influence because I don't have an influence income right now. Right, we captured a new village, and I should probably start building some buildings, like about 800 con plascrete in the bank. Uh, thinking about what's important here, getting at least one listening post so I have a trickle of influence could be quite good here. I could also just go straight crafts workshop and start like cranking, cranking out that hedge money. Um, but I feel like that doesn't make sense. I feel like what I will get here is probably something like uh, a fuel cell factory and a wind trap. I think that's what I'll go for. So I'll get the fuel cell factory, so I have those fuel cells. And then over here, there's no special things here that are really worth worrying about. So I will just go for another Plascrete factory, I think. Yeah, right there. And we'll make our way down to Tablat. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a moment here, we'll make our way down to Tablat so we can raid it and lower its authority cost. And then by the time it recovers, we should be ready to either raid it or take it. At that point, we do have a trade request. He he wants my influence. I can't afford to sell you my influence. I'm sorry. I, don't, I just don't have enough of it to spare. The question is, am I going to be playing like aggressively here? I think I think a building slot would be nice in Ulcus. And the question is, do I want to go heavy on research this game or do I want to go heavy on listening posts? Like if I think about research, a lot of our unique techs are pretty deep down and I want things like border defense as well because like my I feel like my this sieve this this is faction scales really well off of tech so getting some quite a few research hubs might be a good move but they also like they're also quite devious you know what I think I think I'm going to go for like a tech and militaristic game here I'm going to be very expansionist I'm going to be looking to try to kill enemy cities I'm going to be looking to try to wipe out enemy factions raiding um, so maybe technology and military kind of go hand in hand for me then. All right, these troops are healed up. Let's make our way towards Tablet. My one worry about this is this is quite deep into the forest or into the sand. And I do not have uh, survival training, which increases my maximum supply. So that's a slight concern. But I will go ahead and get diplomatic maneuvers. This will open up the open borders agreement and give me access to more agents for the lands of that infiltration. I can't quite do a supply drop yet. I think I might be able to pull this off, though. It's it's quite close. We'll see. I, I, this, I might be cutting it close with these supplies. Although I do have to make it back. That's the big problem, I think. I don't know. Maybe with focus fire, we'll be okay. We investigated the point of interest. Nice. Grab ourselves a little bit of cash there. Feels good. I think it would be good to consider being a little bit of aggressive here. Okay, that's a sandworm problem. All right, let's get this guy out of here. He's a little bit low on supply, so I'm going to go ahead and send him home to get healed up. We're going to go ahead and pillage this village, taking a little while to trigger, and we're also, we're getting supplies back. Oh, you get supplies back after pillaging a town. Okay, that's actually really useful information because I did not know that before this. So the fact that you get supplies back from pillaging means you can be way more aggressive. However, pillaging this has made it cheaper to capture, which is good because they're fearful. Um, so we'll be, we'll have an easier time capturing that. Probably by the time they recover from the raid, we'll be able to come over here and grab it and then get our second spice field, which is exactly what we want to be doing. Uh, my manpower is in a bad shape. That's probably because the land's rad. Yeah. Okay, things didn't quite go the way I want. I do need to get my land's rad stance up. Because it is hurting my spice exchange rate. Uh, which is really, really bad. So, I built a Plascrete factory here. It would be good to get my manpower up even more. Again, this feels like a very heavily manpower driven faction. Like, super important to get your manpower up. Everything seems to derive from, like, needing to spend manpower. Uh, we did get a fuel factory over here. We're okay for Plascrete supplies. I think more water would suit me, because that would set me up to get ready to expand into Tablat and get that second spice field. It would be nice. Let's see, stealth probe. Uh, camouflage with no enemy. Yeah, I think it would be nice to have my maxed out army here. Um, but I do need more water and more manpower before I can do that, because these are quite expensive. 
Uh, we can resolve this point of interest. Any more points of interest? Yeah, I want to re resolve these with my agents because they will give me random advances, which uh, not ideal, okay? Not ideal to get random advances. However, it does make my life easier in terms of technology because we're, we're pushing hard for the tech side of things, right? This place is almost recovered. We could probably go pull off another raid, and I will. Uh, I'll go for Kul Raya to get a raid in on that. And now my water has gone up and my manpower has gone up. Oh, sandworm detected. I guess I'm going to go ahead and make my way back and not push that. Technologically, we're ready to get Cruel Reputation. This will give us the authority boost that we need for when we're annexing things. We'll be able to make plays. And we can even just do probes. Like, it's honestly that simple because that's worth a 10% authority reduction. Um, you can see here... 10% uh, authority cost to annex for two days if you use it a project. So if I just do a probe on a place that I'm about to occupy, I save 10% of the authority, which seems like a pretty valuable, pretty valuable bonus there. We have another agent. I think I'm going to assign this agent to... Who's my closest neighbor? It looks like it's the green guy. I'm going to put one agent on the green guy, and that's mostly just so I can get the intel production. Agents assigned to other houses will get you a... Uh, plus five intel rather than like the benefits from these things. So I'll have a lot more intel to play around with if I do that. We did pay our Imperial tax. We're not on schedule to hit our next tax load. So we'll modify that. In Acrea, we're gonna make a recruitment center. Again, we wanna just keep cranking, and I mean cranking that recruitment stuff. And I think I would like to build a maintenance depot in Tablat. So we're ready to go ahead and attack Tablat again. We'll move out in that direction. And we have access to a probe ability to uh, make it cheaper to annex with authority. Because I want to maximize my authority this game. I really want to, like, expand, be aggressive. I want to play the Harkonnen way, you know? I could absorb both of these things. It would be really... If I got Landsrad guards, do you know how insanely aggressive I could play if I had Landsrad guards? It would change the game. So we're going to vote for that, for me to get those. Get step away. Okay, we need to uh, rush to the town. Some sandwormage going on. There's a little bit of micro involved in this game, but not too much. Nothing too crazy. But the micro that's there is like relatively easy to engage with, and but also quite high stakes. That's the thing that I like about it, is that it's it's very relaxed, but it does have an impact. So let's say I played this probe setup here. Boom. Huh. It did not make it cheaper. So maybe I misinterpreted how this works. Oh, I don't have it finished. Whoops. Well, never mind. <laughs> Take control. Uh, I'd like to run oppression again in here, but I would rather wait till I had my airfield up before I did that again. Um, that would be important enough for me to do. Looks like a raid has been spotted. Scary. We have control of Tablat now. Let's come into Tablat and build ourselves another refinery. We do have the fuel cells to handle this. And maybe I can send... I mean, this is desolation, so maybe I can send a guy to uh, grab this reward here. Although I could study it to get expansion development. Ooh. Yeah, you know what? You're taking way too much attrition there. I'm just going to go ahead and study that with my agents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do that a different day. We'll do that a different day with a different unit. Uh, let's go ahead and pump manpower at Ulcus so that we can do more spice production because that 78 spice production is huge. Now, unfortunately, the, water's, the water upkeep thing did pass. So I'm going to have trouble getting enough... Um, water and I did not get the Landsrad support. That's okay. My my current support is kind of weak. Um, and I need an airfield here big time. Got a trade request from House Atreides. They want to do a research agreement. Interestingly enough, it is going to cost me authority, even though his ability is that people who trade with you don't have authority problems. He wants my tiny meager influence. I mean, he's giving me things I don't want. I wish I could like modify this, but I really don't want I would like the trade agreement, don't get me wrong, or the, the research agreement, but I really don't want the negative consequences that come with that. It's like giving up all my other resources that I kind of, I'm feeling a little bit guarded about right now. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and play another research hub. I want to I want to heavily focus on research hubs here in the early game. And now we'll go ahead and raid Quartlea because we can get our airfield going here, which should allow us to get around the map a little bit easier. The only airfield we have is in Carthag. And I know this one is relatively close, but I think having a network of airfields is important enough. Like, based on my last game, it felt really important. Um, but I do like having this much manpower means I can aggressively deploy crews to my harvesters. Uh, let's get off of the sandwormy areas. And we are... I think we do brutal oppression here, too, to maximize our spice gains. The spice must flow. And we have access to cruel reputation now. Out of curiosity, actually, how expensive 
is this to operate? A little bit too expensive for me right now. So the raid will be good in maximizing our in, uh, status there. I could get spying logistics to increase my agent recruitment speed. This is pretty good. Uh, it would be good to also pick up composite materials. This makes things cheaper. Survival training would give me extra supply. And I think supply could be good. I'd also like to get army logistics. I want to get border defense and army logistics. Those are kind of like the two key things that I want right now. Let's get survival. Let's get army logistics. So I'm going to be doing a lot of pillaging this game. So getting something that improves my pillaging seems quite worth it. Go ahead and pillage this. My units are slowly leveling up, which is quite fun. And we did actually reach a nice hedge money. Now, you do get hedge money from killing enemy units. So fighting constantly is actually victory condition, right? It's like equivalent to having like a craft workshop, depending on I don't know, how much stuff you're actually killing, I guess, is going to dictate, you know, how worth it is. Uh, but let's make our way back to Tablat. And we are dealing with some oppression, but I'm going to hang out in Tablat. And then if things go poorly, I'll teleport... Uh, via the runner thing over to Olcus. Any points of interest? Yeah, I'll investigate this one. I think the big thing I would like to build in here is the research center. It's a lot of knowledge. My question is, I think I would like to get the insurance banks. So I'm going to do this. Oh man, these guys can get two, like two level three bonuses here. That's interesting. I think I would like plus two armor for all military units. And for the political forum, Landsrad standing production would be good. So then I guess I will go for 10% Solari production. Um, yeah, so let's pop down the research center. It's expensive, but it's a lot of knowledge. And a lot of my income is tied up from pillaging. Um, let's go ahead and sell off more of our stockpile. We want to sell, 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 sell right now. And let's also go ahead and get some militia in here. Protect our holdings. Raid detected. This one might be a little bit more difficult to hold because there is now a artificer in this thing, but it should be okay. Village under siege. We can go for development. Let's get army logistics, more resources from pillaging. That's perfect. We might lose a couple of our militia here. Might lose all of our militia, actually. But we killed the enemy exploder. It's going okay. Yeah, so we're going to have to deal with the siege here in the not-too-distant future. The heavy militia. I, I think I would like to go to my maximum army and then push that. So I guess let's go airlift. Oh, I can't afford to airlift. Hold on. I need to cancel this. So I can actually do the airlift and get a raid off on Kulraya. We're not going to attack Siege Aras yet because they have a lot of demolition. I think I would want to have my full six-man squad before I attack that. And I have to wait till the next Landsrad when the water uh, penalty isn't being applied. But killing this Siege will be a major early game goal of mine. Oh, man. 20% manpower production across my empire, though. Whoa, what is this? How the Trades took over this village. Well, that's absolutely unacceptable. I'm sorry. Cannot be allowed. Let's put another slot on... I think I want to go to the Landsrad now, so I actually have at least one influence production. I'm not completely just, you know, deprived of it. Ongoing siege. I, t I can't take control of this village until the Landsrad vote is over. So I think I'm just going to liberate it for now. I had planned to... Um, capture it. Okay, we got a little bit of a problem here. Uh, let's start a supply drop. We need to keep them out of this. Uh, and we need to take out that range unit first, because he's their big DPS. So range unit is down. Focus fire on him. Get my demos out of there. And I want their units to be adjacent to each other. So that my explosives will do extra damage. You need to back up, so you're not tanking. And you can see how a little bit of micro goes quite a long way in this game. Liberation is going well. Let's do a supply drop here to get our units to regen. Because if another unit appears, I don't think I can handle that. But taking this town, oh, here it comes. Yeah, I'm so glad I deployed the, uh... so let's make sure we get these guys, everybody on the Ranger. The Ranger is the big DPS character. And he's also the weakest to kill. You kill here, you run away, and then you get in on this guy. Boom, we are done. Uh, so big problem I have is I'm going to need like lots of spice to be stockpiled and I'm low on cash. So I'll need to get these rare elements up or something. I need to figure out a way to get more money, basically. Um, so brutal oppression on my spice for harvesters. It's the only thing that I know is you click the button <laughs> and you get more spice. We now pillage more effectively. I think I would like to get... What is it I'm looking for? Processing plants. Yeah, I need to get processing plants for sure. Uh, just to give me that little bit of early game Solari income. Ooh, I've been targeted with a Plazcrete uh, upkeep malice. I don't think I can really just accept that, so I'll build a Plazcrete factory really quickly, just so I have a positive amount. Sandworm attacking one of my harvesters. Get him back. Actually, I now have the influence on the water to take control of this village, so cancel that. I'm not liberating it, I'm capturing it. And it has a handy airfield here too. 
We grabbed composite materials. Let's go for structured warehouses. I definitely want those so I can build the processing plant in this new town and, and maybe take care of my salary income problem. Research two developments to gain a thousand salary. That will give me a huge amount of buffer time. That's amazing. And I have enough manpower in the bank to consider going for modular parts so I can assign crew to my harvesters and increase my spice income. More. God, um, gear sabotage. So positioning on this is going to be important. Bro, he's sending more. Why didn't I kill this airfield? Why didn't I kill this airfield? God damn it. Um, okay, I might not be able to micro my way out of this one. Let's see. Can I get more military over here? Let's see if we can get a pair of vanguards over. If we can kill the range units first. Yeah, this is just going to be... God, I should have liberated it. That's okay. We'll be back. We'll be back. Cancel this. I need my militia. I lost so many military units there. That's really annoying. That's kind of dumb that you can use an airfield while a town is like, quote unquote, occupied. Very odd. I was not expecting that as a possibility. However, now that I know that that can be done, well, let me tell you, that airfield is getting blown up. Okay, I have gear sabotage and I want a supply drop to keep my troops healthy. We got to take this. It's key. So the AI on hard is, is, is actually quite, you know, they're not pushovers at all. Modular parts, so I have something to spend my manpower on. That's perfect. It'll increase my spice flows. And the AI seems to be aggressively targeting me with uh, resolutions in the lands, Rad. So like, yes, I'm going to teach you another lesson, old man. You took a little bit too much damage there. So let's keep you safe. Got away with one health. Let's go ahead and heal. I need you to get off the sand. We have control of this. Kill that airfield. Uh, take control. Maybe we can keep, well... Let's kill the airfield. Let's drop a supply drop here and get this next range unit over. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to do the defensive thing. Keep him off. He's leaving. We do have a gear sabotage, which will help. Our lands red rating has gone up and I would really like this spice exchange thing. My economy is dying. It's fueled almost exclusively by oppression. <laughs> the Harkonnen economy. Oppression in action. But when I do click the oppression button, do I make spice? Let me tell you. So we killed the airfield. Um, this vanguard is is dying. Run. Is he going to get this kill? Wow. Okay, I did not like. That's annoying. I guess the chasing unit is faster. Kind of a little bit silly to me, but hey, that's life. Uh, I'll have to build another vanguard. These vanguards don't seem very strong in my opinion. You kind of have to let other things die. I think I would rather focus on troopers and gunners, and just focus on being meaty and AO with AOE damage. Man, annexing this village is taking its time. I will say that. I've got so much authority in the bank. I was meant to be doing like active raiding, all that sort of jazz, and <laughs> it's not working out for me. So there's modular parts. Now, where's our next one? I think we go for border defense, more militia. That'll allow me to play again more aggressively. Um, and it'll also push me lay of the land. So I'm definitely looking to control Arrakis here. We got our new village in Korea. Let's fill it up with militia. Uh, well, I'll put at least two militia in here. Uh, and we want the processing plant to increase our Solaris income. That's plus 30 Solaris. Uh, and you can build that here because of the rare elements. Then I think we can, we want to expand to Obnum as well. So I'll move my military down here. Okay, there's an awful lot of stuff going on. Oh, we got a raider. Okay, we can fight these raiders. It shouldn't be too difficult to wipe these out. I think once I have my six military units and maybe some of these guys have some levels, I don't know if anyone's leveled actually. So if I look at the difference between these two units, one of them that's leveled and one of them that isn't, this guy does 16 damage, this guy does 15, and this guy has 420 health, which honestly does not feel like the greatest thing ever. Okay, can you guys outrun the sandworm? Please outrun the sandworm. Thank you. Good job. Hard thing to do, outrunning a sandworm, let me tell you. But yeah, I really want the chome branch um, so that I can exchange spice better. So that's going to be probably the next thing that I look to do. Lovely. We got our processing plant down in Colria. We're okay for Plascrete right now. We could probably use more. We could also use more water. This is a bad wind region, so not a place to get more water. Manpower, we're good. Fuel cells, we're good. Could make an excuse for military bases. Definitely want more militia, right? Because that increases the production of resources. Could go research hub. I am researching heavily. Let's keep the plascrete flowing. It seems it just seems like such an important basic resource to get so much plascrete. Like you need so much plascrete. It's insane. All right, nice one. Sandworm arrived, but that's not a big deal. I don't have the water to take control here. Perhaps I can find a place where I can 
justify a water expansion. Any fours or fives? Four over here. All right, I'll drop a uh, wind trap here. No need to pillage, we can just take this. So some of my enemies are reaching 5k hegemony, so I'm hoping that I can continue to, uh, <laughs> to, to continue to keep up and catch up. I don't know, it's, it's getting tough out there. Every town has a fully stocked militia, very happy about that. And we have a bonus to our chome spice exchange rate. I wonder, is there a way for me to check? I wish there was a way for me to see, am I like meeting quota? Because the hedge money from meeting quota seems important. One of my villages will rebel unless I take control of a new village. I plan to take control of a new village, so that's fine. We shall see that. Oh, also, I could deploy more people to my harvesters. There's a spice flow increase. Very, very nice. That's going to help. That's actually going to be huge for us. I need to think about my, th my third spice field. It's probably here. Um, so I'll probably start expanding west. And I need to max out my military too. Let's annex this and grab ourselves. Well, I can't quite afford that just yet. But I think I, think I need to... Do I want to keep the siege? Here's the thing. Hear me out. This siege gives you a 20% manpower production. I think that might be global. A 20% global manpower boost is insane. So just because this has such value, I think I will start trading. As much as I hate losing that water, I think it's worth it. I'll, I'll just have to get more water from somewhere else. And I will. I'll build another water gatherer. Obnum, this is 100% a processing plant facility. And unfortunately, I think the final building I'll have to put in here will be a maintenance facility and I'll have to get my spice silo in Quart Quartaluya. Obnum, as you make your way back over here, I'll probably want an airfield here. Um, my airfield coverage is a little bit spooky right now. I don't like that I'm on the, you know, I have this guy on my border. All that stuff is making me uncomfortable. So we'll have to deal with these siege raids for a while until we can actually get this guy to be an ally. It'll take a long, long, long time, which isn't like the normal Harkonnen thing to do, right? It's, we would, I, my plan was to completely obliterate that. However, the fact that it has um, that 20% manpower bonus, I, and I'm Harkonnen and I need manpower to do everything, seems pretty good. Let's do some oppression here and keep that salary income nice and high. We have the influence to annex Quartalia, so we will. Let's deploy our troops. And then over in Obnum, we're going to deploy an airfield for sure. Just It just needs to happen. We need those airfields. Military deployed. Let's attack. I'm curious about the 10% the bonus here. I assume that's like a temporary thing that lasts for a period of time. Like if I click on my guy here, he gets 10% power and one, plus one armor. Ooh, taking a little bit of damage. Time for a new technology. I'm going to go for border defense. It'll take 24 days, but it will give me a militia slot and better militia. Which is absolutely in my wheelhouse. I would like to increase my Arrakis infiltration. Again, expansion, expansion, expansion. That'll give me more authority. More authority means more expansion. More expansion means more resources. More resources means more power. More power? Well, that's everything in Dune. So let's pop down the maintenance center here. This should significantly reduce the upkeep. I have a lot of buildings in here, right? That are all like using Plascrete and Solari. It just makes your economy more efficient. It does feel like it's important to do. So I wonder, is anyone in control of the polar region? Because it kind of looks like the AI has been expanding very, very aggressively. I would like to get another Ornithopter, I think, to control things. We have control of a new village. We have plenty of surplus water. We have another fuel cell location well we definitely want to get the fuel cells up um but you can never have too much plascrete okay hear me out you can never have too much plascrete being able to build buildings that is based time for a new vote i could eat this manpower upkeep i wouldn't like gear regulations though um let's go ahead and i never explored this town actually i need to find it so i can raid it i could raid house atreides here you know what it's not a bad move um let's go ahead and get into shuttle range and go for a raid on house atreides i'd also like to build Another um, Vanguard? No, I like... Gunners are expensive, but damn are they strong. I'll get my third trooper. Oh no, I can't afford that actually. Cancel recruitment, refund. Let's drop right on top of Cool Altar. And our goal is to pillage. We have a gear sabotage. Let's grab ourselves a supply drop so we can make sure that we have uh, uh, healing available. So we're not completely stuck. We get into trouble. So the worm just happened in Ulcus. I feel like we're ready for to do a uh, oppression here and maximize that spice gain. So I'll drop an oppression in there. Let's start the raid. I forgot to vote for something in the Landsrad. Oops. <laughs> Whoops. The 
unfortunate thing is that the, my units are weaker now because of the Landsrad thing. We have Turmoil. I've taken control of another village so I can prevent a rebellion. It's perfect. We have Plascrete factories, all that sort of stuff. Uh, let's do a supply drop to keep the healing up. They're regenerating. They'll regenerate 50% of their health per day and it lasts for two days. So it should give me enough healing to sustain this push. We're also getting little chunks of hedge money from killing. And we're going to do a nice big old pillage here. And that'll also theoretically set this up for capture later. So supply drops and gear sabotage seem key to sustaining aggression here. Ooh, there's another spice field. Also, this is like an isolated town. He can't even... I think I want to kill his airfield. Let's make sure we do that. Kill the airfield means he can't bring units in reinforcements. And also it might be worth resources to do that or something. I don't know, I don't know if you get like raiding income from blowing up shit. So we got a Plascrete factory. Let's get the fuel cell factory. It's a lot of excess fuel cells. Okay, here comes the drop. So let's get our positioning right here. The Vanguard, I don't want to be in combat right now. Uh, let's play the supply drop and the gear sabotage. So we've negatively impacted their ability to shoot and fire and stuff. They're focused on firing my unit, but I'm getting regen. Let's get you to run. Force the micro. We're killing, we're killing, we're killing. Force the run, keep running. Run back past your allies. Okay, this is working perfectly. Incredible. Let's begin the pillage again. That was like masterful. I felt amazing doing that micro, even though it was like, it was so basic, <laughs> but it felt so good to out micro the AI. Ah, it looks like there was a rebellion. That's okay. Uh, retaking this is fine because we have uh, past ownership. I'm just kind of sad that I lost the, oh. Must've been a raid or something. I'll retake it now in a moment. So we'll blow up that airfield just for the sake of getting rid of it. Imperial tax paid. Let's grab ourselves another supply drop and I would like another gear sabotage. We're on track for our next tax payment. Yeah, we're good. We should be more than good because we plan to do some uh, oppression too. So airfield dead. That's great. Pillage complete. Now let's get the hell out of here so we can go teleport and deal with this village that rebelled. So I wonder, do turrets... Mm, do turrets prevent shenanigans? Like, could they prevent rebellions? I don't know. I feel like I like Intel, but I, I feel like knowledge is the key to playing this particular game. Knowledge and militaristic stuff. All right, let's get an airfield teleport over here. Oh, it looks like there's another siege raid. The siege will take a while to be friendly with me. But I think, I think maybe killing these things, is this still worth, is killing these raiders, like, worth it? Like, in terms of hegemony? I'm curious. Yeah, killing raiders is actually worth score. So constantly fighting has like s like extreme benefits. It's something to definitely consider. So I'm learning a lot about like how I want to play. But anytime there's like a little bit of combat, that, that sandworm, he shows up and he is not happy about it. All right, let's take control of this again. Hurts that, my, that I lost it. I'm curious. Well, I don't know what the best way to deal with rebellions is. Because it seems like a rebellion can happen and uh, your militia doesn't fight back and defend you. It's just interesting. I'm, I'm not sure how to best deal with rebellions. It's like having airfields everywhere. Um, feels a little inefficient, but maybe it's the way. So I would think I would like uh, Mimnon here. So I'll wait till my units are healed up here before I deploy out the Mimnon. We've got a raid going. But yeah, the polar region is under control, but I think if I own Mimnon, this is a really, really good choke point for me. Uh, so let's go make it happen. Don't go into the dangerous desert. Stay on the safe piece of desert, you know? <laughs> the safe piece of desert. Seems like a bit of an oxymoron, you know? The wet desert. The dry one. All right, great. We picked up border defense, so we have an extra militia slot, which is a 5% production boost everywhere we build that militia. What's our next move here? I have a ton of spare manpower, so an extra har assignable crew in harvesters would be good. I also need ground command for extra command points and lower manpower upkeep. Also, military threat. This seems quite good as a way for me to generate influence. And it would also be quite good to get air command. This would give my airfields extra range. Yeah, let's get ground command to lower our man manpower upkeep. No, let's get plus one assign. Mm, no, cancel. Eh. How do I cancel the research? Yeah, I want to research grid X plane first so I can spend my manpower on something useful and then I'll expand my military. Uh, I really don't want this Plaz Creed upkeep to hit me. And House Atreides is like my current main opponent. So I'm going to just like go hard. Um, I guess like 280 votes on this. Because the Plaz Creed upkeep is just killer. It's way, 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 way too killer. 
So we hit them with the Plascrete upkeep. That's perfect. That's going to cripple their economy, I hope. And now that we're in position in the center here, we have two people that we can bounce between, raiding Ulbat and Tabval, uh, on a pretty regular basis, which should be a good resource generator, as well as a hedge money generator, right? I should be making good money um, and, you know, victory points from actually taking them on. I really, really, really need to take on Fanet. But it'll take me a while to get there. Let's do some brutal oppression here to increase our resource output. The spice must flow. We do control a new village. I think the very first thing we're building in here is an airfield. Uh, this is going to be very much so a military base, even though we do have the mountain for the Plascrete production. That's okay. Oh, let's make sure we deploy militia in our sadly downtrodden base here of Ulcus. What could I deploy in Ulcus that would, like, make my life easier? It's a spice harvesting zone. It has tech. It has manpower. I mean, influence production isn't the worst thing in the world. It's not the worst thing in the world. Hedge money trickle this early? It's quite cheap. It's really cheap. That's the thing I'm thinking about. It's like, it's really cheap. I have tons of water. It's kind of blowing my mind right now. How do I have so much water? How do I actually have so much water? Wait, what? Was, it, was there like a water deficit employed against me? If I was thinking about what I would build here, military units can embark or disembark, shuttles within missile battery. I have plenty of Plascrete right now. I have plenty of fuel cells. My economy's in a good shape, except for Solari. Like, is a crafts workshop really worth it? Like, this early? Yeah, let's do crafts workshops. Let's let's start... Mm. I mean, I have the recruitment office. Would Like, does a missile battery make sense here? It fights rebellions, I guess. Nah, I'm gonna go crafts office. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna start, like, pushing for... I wanna keep my win condition kind of pushing, 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 pushing. Oh, man, look at that huge raid. I'll tell you what, though. I feel like this kind of feels like a natural area. Kind of take a moment to take a chill. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.